Okay, everybody, we are here to do the unboxing of my newest book, My Last Summer with Cass. I've been waiting a very long time uh, to uh, unveil this book to the world. It's a special one. I put uh, an awful lot of time into it. Let's see if we can pop this open and see the actual finished published book. Come on, stop fighting with me, box. How dare you? <laughs> Here it is, My Last Summer with Cass. 250 pages. This is the soft cover version. Let's see if we've got any hard covers in here. Give me a second, folks. Yes, here it is, the hard cover version. It's been a while since I had a book published in hard cover. Uh, really looking forward to showing you guys this, but uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. Man, I can't believe it's finally a real book. Oh. <laughs> so many years I put into this. Can't wait to show you the insides. Give me just a second. I'm going to be right back. Okay, so here we go. Like I said, there's the soft cover version. That's going to be uh, less expensive. And then, of course, the hard uh, cover is kind of like the deluxe. I have not talked a lot about what this story is, but I'm going to in this video in a non-spoilery way. But I want to quickly show you something cool about this hard cover version. Let me sort of refocus just a second because uh, this has never been done for any of my books before. This jacket, when it comes off, actually reveals a secret, secret sort of second cover uh, that is printed directly onto the, the real cover of the book. I think it's a cool sort of extra touch. Like I said, no one's ever done one of these for my uh, books before, so that was very cool to see. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw you into one of the opening scenes of the book. It's largely silent. It's just silent storytelling, but this is going to give you a little taste of uh, what you're heading into when you uh, read this book. So the receptionist says it's a reproduction of a painting by Rubens. And I tell her, look, I don't care if it's an original Picasso, it's a picture of a topless woman. And you shouldn't have it hanging in a dentist's office where little kids can see it. So how does she react? Well, she said she'll bring it up with Dr. Kapinski. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, you can probably start to get a sense of what the book is about based on this opening scene, or one of the opening scenes. Uh, it's my book about artists, really, and these two uh, girls uh, have been friends since childhood, and they both uh, develop as artists as they get older. And later on, I'm going to show you a scene uh, where they are in high school, and that's where the sort of heart of the book takes place. Um, but really, uh, it, it, this was my chance to really get into the idea of what it's like to be an artist, what are your concerns as an artist, and uh, of course I was drawing upon my own memories when I came up with this scene. I drew on the walls when I was a kid uh, up in our attic and uh, I didn't get in trouble for it actually. My, <laughs> my parents didn't seem to mind because it was, it was up in the attic and maybe it was just like a storage closet or something. But uh, this whole book is probably more autobiographical than anything I've ever done before, even though it features uh, young women as the main characters. This character, Megan, the narrator, is really largely based on me. Now, let me show you a little bit of the behind the scenes of how I created this artwork. Now, when I first came up with this story, I had the somewhat ambitious idea that I wanted all the artwork to be hand-drawn uh, and not uh, computer-colored. Yet, it was supposed to be a full-color book. Now, um, if you've ever tried to do a, a hand-colored, <laughs> full-color illustration, you'll know it takes an awful lot of time. And uh, to do 250 pages full color was going to be a really hard thing to do, especially if I was supposed to have this done 
you know, within uh, a year or so of uh, beginning. Uh, so I came up with this way of doing things where I would take the um, pages that were only sort of partially colored, blue on a um, sort of pale yellow uh, paper, and then I used white gouache, my beloved white gouache, to uh, add white highlights. And apart from that, I didn't add any uh, further coloring to the um, artwork itself, but I scanned it into Photoshop and I found a technique of sort of pushing the colors in slightly different directions. So you can see here comparing the two uh, that you got something that was sort of slightly colored. It was sort of somewhere between black and white and full color. And to me it gave this nice sort of nostalgic um, glow to some of these scenes. And I do hope that it stands out among all of the books out on the market because of this somewhat unusual coloring technique. Now let's go ahead and get into uh, a second scene that takes place when they are teenagers. After an awful lot of walking, we got to Chinatown, where we went to Cass's favorite dim sum restaurant. How did you get to know all these people? It's like you've got friends all over the whole city. Well, it mostly started with this art contest I entered at school. I won first prize, and that got my work seen by this painter named Vivian Bursley. Turns out she has this huge studio space for young female artists to use, free of charge. Seriously? I'll take you over there tomorrow. You're going to love it. Try the chicken feet. They're amazing. Anyway, Vivian has been an incredible mentor. She introduced me to most of the people you met today. I mean, apart from the tattoo guy. I still can't believe your mom let you get that tattoo. I didn't ask permission. I just did it. My mom would be in tears, and my dad would straight up murder me. Well, that's all the more reason to get one. Show them who's in charge. Maybe when I get to college. You're not eating the chicken feet. What's the problem? Yeah, well, I probably should have said something when you ordered those things, but I don't think I'm ready to... One, just eat one. That's all I'm asking. No, I'm not going to... A bite. Just one bite. Come on, just one... Okay, okay. I will take a nibble, just to show you that I'm cultured and sophisticated and open-minded enough to eat disgusting things. This is the part where you tell me how right I was. It's not as bad as it looks. It's good. Admit it. It's kind of delicious. You, my friend, need to take more chances. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Mm-hmm. Can we order more of these? All right, here's some of the original artwork from that sequence. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, this is quite an autobiographical story in many ways. Uh, and this main character, Megan, is based on me, the other character named Cass is uh, to some degree modeled after a friend of mine, John Walter. Uh, I first met John back in high school, and then later on after um, uh, we grew older, he got a job in New York City as a film editor and director. And I would go to visit him on several occasions, and uh, uh, one time even stayed <laughs> in his apartment for a considerable length of time because he's such a nice guy. Uh, and th some of these things sort of got into my head in terms of telling a story about two different creative people who have two different personalities and two different sort of uh, instincts. And you can see in this story, even though it's about uh, ostensibly about uh, eating uh, at a Chinese restaurant, we're starting to see the differences in the personalities, the adventurousness of this character Cass versus the sort of cautiousness of this character Megan. And that's really what's at the heart of this story. And uh, this scene, you know, I'm trying to show you something that is relatively unspoilery. Um, suffice to say, later scenes get much more dramatic uh, as the tension and the disagreements between the two of them begin to build. And uh, this is probably, I would say, my first work of serious fiction in that sense. It really does try to bring these two characters fully to life, make you care about them, and make you interested in seeing what happens with the relationship. Maybe I can show you just a couple more panels before I wind this video down. 
Okay, so I'm not going to read uh, this out loud to you, but I thought you'd enjoy meeting these three colorful characters. They are artist friends of Cass, who are, in a way, even more avant-garde than she is. This character named Sybil, uh, who does these very strange uh, paintings that have vomiting squirrels in them and stuff like that. And Here's Bahati, the sculptor, who sort of installs her uh, sculptures in the dead of night on top of uh, advertisements and things like that. And then finally, Taja, maybe the most intriguing character in the story. She's taken a vow of 95% silence, which means we never hear a word out of her. Or do we? I think I don't want to give away too much in that regard, but that's basically enough maybe of me showing the inside of the book. I do have to keep some of it secret, but suffice to say, uh, you're going to get to a point of much, much greater drama than what you saw uh, in the, that uh, scene that I read from the restaurant. That's really just the beginnings of the conflict between these two characters. Uh, and uh, I am super, super grateful to anyone who chooses to support me by getting this book, either the hardcover or the soft cover. This is my book for artists. Uh, and for anyone who's had a complicated friendship where there were ups and downs, uh, I think you're going to find a lot to relate to in this story. But I think it's time for me to wind this down. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.